Good morning again. Um, many of you have heard much of our story, um, so I thought that um, what I would do is just share a little bit about um, how Psalm 23, perhaps the world's most famous psalm, um, has been something which has really touched my heart, and I've learned so much about my good shepherd um, in my life. Um, and it was actually Keith Green, for any of those oldies amongst us who know the Keith Green version of Psalm 23, that we chose to have sung at our wedding. And uh, I got married a bit late. I was 34 by the time I got married. And so uh, there we are, <laughs> before I went grey. Um, so I had you know, been through quite a lot of struggles of... You know, will I ever find somebody to share my life with? Will I ever have children? Am I happy to really trust God and be single? Um, so that, that was very much part of uh, my 20s. And then through God's amazing grace and goodness and mercy, he managed to find somebody on the opposite side of the world in Australia and bring them to the UK where I was. And so my beloved Mike... <laughs> came and I, I really thank God for his goodness and mercy in doing that. Um, not only shared my faith, same faith, same passion for mission, uh, love of tennis, but he was even willing to do ballroom dancing with me. So <laughs> what grace and what uh, mercy and what goodness. Um, and so as we had our wedding service, as we were signing the register, some very good friends of mine from the church were singing Keith Green's version of Psalm 23 behind us. And this was the church where I grew up, and I don't, you, you can't see it, but that wooden relief above the altar was also a wooden carving of Jesus holding a lamb to his chest. And that church has got a very, really um, deep place in my heart. It was the place I became a Christian at uni, and, um, and this was the first church where I really learned what it was to follow Jesus and I still had my passion for justice and reaching the the most vulnerable so I got involved with setting up a, um, a service particularly for those with learning difficulties um, I had great fun being a hospital radio DJ um, I got involved with a small group um, helping new Christians even as a new Christian and got involved with this Albania prayer group and so I just really uh, thank God for that church and the way I grew and the goodness, the mercy of understanding what it was like to be part of belonging to a church family and, um, and, and seeing the wider spiritual needs of the church. So Psalm 23, that image of the shepherd, um, is very precious to me. Um, and I, looking back at that time as well, I see how he, God not just led me in kind of ministry things but at the time I was working in satellite engineering at the university there and uh, I was involved with technology transfer um, programs with countries around the world so I had this amazing multicultural team experience working with people from South Africa how handy was that uh, South Africa um, Pakistan Chile um, South Korea so I look back and I think, wow, the goodness of God, even before I knew about Malawi, even before I knew about mission, he was giving me these project management skills, he was giving me a love for people from other countries and ability to work in teams with them. Um, so even pre-marriage, pre pre-Malawi days, my good shepherd um, was taking care of me and didn't waste a minute. Um, so then, then fast forward, you know we went to Malawi, and uh, actually Psalm 23 was a huge part of our life in Malawi. Uh, when we first got there, they used to say a psalm together in the church service, uh, and it was almost always Psalm 23 that we recited together. Um, all the, we had it in the hymn book, and we often would sing it. Uh, all the ladies had to learn it, and um, this picture is the lady standing round a grave. So every funeral, Psalm 23 was there. The women were involved in uh, reciting that at the funeral service. And we actually had a picture by our entryway into our house 
which was a local picture, and it had um, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want on it. So every day for 16 years, we went in and out the door and saw the Lord is my shepherd. And whilst I do recognize how much Jesus was our shepherd there, you know, he protected us from snakes and fires on the compound, dreadful, you know, road accidents were, I think, some of the worst in Africa statistically, and um, he protected us from malaria and sickness and all the other various hazards of living overseas. Um, but to be honest, we were still pretty comfortably off. Um, you know, we knew we could go to the hospital. And I really grappled with this good shepherd were the promises in Psalm 23 just as relevant for people in absolute grinding poverty struggling with HIV and all the rest of it. And so the next picture is um, this lady that I learned so much from. She was a member of our church. When we left, we gifted her the picture that we had by our front door um, for all those years. And um, in her life, she had to, in her family, they were dealing with um, being HIV positive. Um, she had a stillborn child, um, alcoholism. Her husband lost his job. You know, she, so often she didn't know where the next meal was coming from or whether she'd pay the rent that month. But she was so faithful at coming to our Thursday Bible study. And she would often tell, sit me down and tell me about how God had been good to her. And so she was generous with the little that she had. And she said, usually when she was obedient and generous, that was when God provided for her needs. And I just thought, wow, this is just so amazing um, that these promises are true no matter what circumstances you're in. So I'm still on that journey of learning it. Um, she showed me how it's so true in any circumstance. Um, and so finally, the, the last Psalm 23, um, the song that I've chosen that we'll sing together um, in a minute it's a new version. It's a Stuart Townend um, version of Psalm 23. And it's one I came across just as we were preparing to come back from Malawi. And, you know, you remember the story of, of not knowing whether we would make it back and COVID and flights and all the rest of it. And I would sit listening to this and the, there's a phrase in it, um, your goodness and mercy will carry me home. You, you know. And so I would sit there with tears in my eyes saying, I'll trust you, Lord. We may be stuck here for ages. We may miss the wedding, but I'm still going to trust you. I've seen your mercy and your goodness, and you will lead me home. And to be honest, the, in the context in Malawi, I also learned a great deal about seeing... Often when you ask missionaries, where is home, they struggle to give you an answer. <laughs> Um, and I really learned in Malawi that we're on the way to our eternal home. And uh, so this song kind of really helps me think, and I learned from the Christians in Malawi, to have a much more heaven perspective on my home and, uh, and going through. Um, we would often spend all day at funeral services, sitting, waiting for things to happen, thinking about life and death, and they were a pretty regular occurrence. Um, so I don't know where the rest of my story will take me, um, but I do want to go on living and trusting this good shepherd that I have experienced in my life until I get to my ultimate home. Um, he's always provided what we've needed. Um, he's led us to good places. He's given me a chance to seek his righteousness, um, not just in Malawi, but now in our new ministry or my anti-trafficking ministry within SIM. Um, taken us through some tough times um, but his goodness and his mercy have been more than I could ever have uh, deserved or believed so as we sing this song um, I hope that you too will be drawn to our good shepherd uh, no matter what you're going through and I finish with this uh, words from Isaiah 40 so like that wooden relief it's Isaiah that says, the Lord is like a shepherd who gathers the lambs in his arms and holds them close to his chest. And uh, that's how tenderly he cares for me and all of us until we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. 
Thank you.